name is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com and I am your GPR professor. I'm coming today at you with a video about hyperbola matching, but more importantly, the importance of you being as accurate as possible when you're on site and you're matching your hyperbola to get wave velocities, to estimate depth, what happens if you're off by a little bit? What if you're off by one dielectric value? What if you're off by one dielectric value? What kind of difference is that going to make in how accurate you are? It's an important question. So uh, let's jump right in. So this is your site. This is your ground surface. It's green, so let's say it's grass. Here's your antenna. You're pushing your antenna along the ground surface. What dielectric value do you use if you cannot find any hyperbolic reflections to match, right, to model? What do you do? On most systems, it'll give you a few different preset options. It'll say in dry, you know, rock, it's eight. And in wet soil, it's 20 or something like that. It'll give you some sort of preset value that's an average of that soil type, assuming that you're putting in what your soil type actually is correct. So let's say you are, dry rock would be eight, <clears throat> wet soil would be about 20. It depends on, on your system. But that's what you put in. That's what you put in. And what if you're off? Or what if that's off by a little bit? Is that gonna have a huge effect? On your depth estimates. What if you're off by a lot? Is that going to have a big effect on your depth estimates? Could be pretty dramatic. Now, kind of the next step. Let's say you're pushing it around and you find a hyperbola. Okay? You find a hyperbola. So then what's your next step? Your next step then is to match it. Right? Is to use whatever the function is on your piece of equipment that brings basically a ghost hyperbola, like a model where you can you know, make it broader or more narrow, and you want to fit that model as best you can right up against the hyperbola that your GPR recorded so it can tell you how fast your wave was moving, which then gives you your estimate of depth. So if you're right on point, right, then maybe it'll come up and say, well, right here, your estimate is, um, let's say, seven. Okay, 7, right, RDP. 7 RDP. What happens if you're a little bit off? Right, what happens if you're a little bit off? And instead of matching it perfectly, right, and you can see over here it says 1 feet, 2 feet, 3 feet. Instead of matching it perfectly, let's say it's, a, it's you know, says it's about 1 foot off, but you come in and your model is a little narrow. What does that mean? What's it going to spit out if your model, right, your hyperbola match is a little bit too narrow? It's going to suggest that it's a high RDP. Okay, so maybe it's eight. What if, however, your model comes out a little bit broader than the actual hyperbolic reflection? Right? What if it's a little broader than that? Well, then it might be less. Then it might be six. Well, what's the power? of going from seven to six or seven to eight, how much of an effect is that gonna have on your data? Well, it depends. It depends on what frequency you're using, depends on how deep you're actually looking into the subsurface. And so on this site, you know, we were looking just a few, uh, um, you know, feet, from our targets were between two to four feet below the ground surface. And I actually found a number of hyperbola, okay, and I matched all of them and got a little bit of a range. And it was very narrow, the range, okay, but I used the median, which I, on that site was seven, okay? It was seven. But at the shallow depths with a 400 megahertz frequency, which is what I was using, the difference between six RDP and seven RDP was four Inches, okay? Plus or minus four inches, right? So the difference between six and seven or the difference between seven and eight was less four inches shallower or four inches deeper. 
Now, if you're trying to locate things in real time and you're actually drawing right on the street, for example, if you're locating a utility uh, you know, pipe or something like that, four inches makes a difference. If it's a gas line and you say it's one feet deep, right, one foot deep, but it's actually only eight inches deep, and they think they have that wiggle room and they're in there carefully, but bam, they hit it at eight inches and it explodes a pipe in somebody's face. That's dangerous. <coughs> now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be plus or minus four inches on every single site. <coughs> Excuse me. Apologize. Doesn't mean it's going to be plus or minus four inches on every site for one dielectric value. Okay. It may be a little more, it may be a little less. On this site where we were, that was the RDP. Those were the depths that we were identifying targets, and that was our plus minus. Now, you might say, well, you know, a lot of people do. Well, one dielectric value, not a huge deal. But what if it's three, right? What if it's three dielectric values? Let's say you map a few of these things, okay? And now you have a range between six and ten. And you say it's seven, but it's actually ten. That's three RDP values. Right? That's three numbers up. <coughs> three numbers up. What's the difference? On our site, that had been one foot. That had been one foot. So you expect it's going to be two feet deep. You miscalculated by an entire foot. Somebody runs into it a foot more, a foot shallower than you had expected, that they had expected, because your uh, um, hyperbola were off, or your value was off by a couple of them. What do you do, right? What do you do? Well, what you do, what you can do. You go as long as you can until you find a hyperbola that you can match. Because let's say you put in wet soil, your system says 20, but in reality, maybe it ain't all that wet. And if it's not all that wet and it's 16, that's a difference of four values. That's a big difference. That's over a foot difference in depth. So number one, okay? Try to find an actual hyperbola. Number two, use care when you're matching your hyperbola on your system. Use care, do as best as you can. Do as best as you can, so that's number two. Number three, try to find as many as you can in order to give some sort of range to people that are there, or a number, but really more to the point is give some sort of estimate of accuracy, okay? We estimate that it's seven, the depth will be at one foot, but it could be between two feet and eight inches based on four different ones that we actually modeled. There's a couple ways of doing this. Those are the three things that I would suggest. Walk around until you find a hyperbola, match it, right, number two, match it as best as you possibly can. Do not come in narrow, do not come in wide, match it perfectly, and match as many as you can so you can give an accurate description of depth and probabilities of accuracy to your customers and your clients. So I hope this was helpful. If you got some value out of this, Please click the like button below and share it around with a colleague, a friend, a classmate. If you like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, pop over to learngpr.com. Put your name and email address in and we will send you our educational, free educational training videos every single week. All right? Enjoy your surveying.